This is your Weather Extreme video for Saturday, December the 27th. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Thanks for tuning in, and we've got a lot of weather to talk about. First, I want to look at the temperature trace for the last 24 hours. Kind of an interesting trace. Certainly not your typical sine wave pattern with daily highs uh, in the afternoon and morning lows in the uh, around sunrise, but uh, an interesting one nonetheless. A little uh, light rain on the lens at uh, Tuscaloosa. And uh, while uh, Fayette was still dry at this time, I think probably they've seen a little bit of rain early this morning as a patch of rain is moving through western and central Alabama. The weather system uh, at the surface, uh, we have high pressures moving off to our east, but uh, that is allowing a good southerly flow to return across the lower Mississippi River Valley ahead of the next storm system, and that storm system is going to be slow to move, so we're going to have some interesting issues to deal with in the upper atmosphere. The 500 millibar pattern shows a deep trough over the Four Corners area with a nice southwesterly uh, fetch over the southeastern states, bringing moisture out of the Pacific and across the uh, northwestern Gulf and across Texas up into the southeastern U.S. So we have plenty of moisture for the uh, system to work with. It is kind of chilly behind that system, uh, although that cold air is not likely to get all the way to us, uh, thanks to the fact that the flow is going to turn zonal. Uh, but across central Alabama this morning, temperatures were uh, kind of varying a good deal with uh, readings ranging from uh, the mid 40s to the lower 50s across the area uh, and it just depends on exactly where you were as to what temperatures you were getting. We do have a, a, a sort of a broad area of rain over the the uh, lower Mississippi River Valley with uh, this patch that's moving through central Alabama this morning so expect periods of rain off and on today. Flash flood watches are in effect for uh, the, about the western half of central Alabama and parts of northwest Alabama and back through a good portion of Mississippi and back into southern Louisiana and the QPF indicates why we have those flash flood watches. We're looking at uh, rainfall amounts across central Alabama on the order of two to three inches and for southeastern Louisiana and extreme southern Mississippi we're looking on the order of uh, three to maybe as much as four and a half inches of rain for, with this system. The system will have some instability with it, but there is no severe weather forecast. Uh, there's a marginal area across uh, for day one across the southwest uh, Louisiana area and the extreme southeast coast of uh, Texas. For day two, we see thunderstorms as a possibility, but no organized severe weather is expected. And we still see some thunderstorms uh, for day three uh, down across southeast Alabama and southwest Georgia. But again, no organized severe thunderstorms are forecast by the Storm Prediction Center. All right, let's get to modeling. We're going to look at a number of different things this morning. And there's the uh, 500 millibar pattern for noon today. And we do have little short wave. You can see one in the vicinity of Chattanooga uh, that is moving uh, through. And that is helping to create this uh, lift and helping to create this patch of rain that is moving through the area. And the GFS doing a pretty good job keeping the bulk of the rain, you know, back down to the south west of us. Precipitable water values are interesting because uh, you can see that they're much higher down along the Louisiana and Mississippi coast, but they are going to change. We'll show those in a moment. And moving out to Sunday at midday, we can see that uh, that trough is coming out. It's it's opening up and kicking out of the, the southwestern U.S. as it's uh, beginning to come uh, into the lower Mississippi River Valley. And so that's going to uh, set the stage here for training. That is, the thunderstorms moving like a train on a train track. One thunderstorm following right behind the next one. And the, and the result is that some areas, and it's too hard to tell specifically, we'll have to watch radar for that, but it's too hard to tell the exact location for those heavier rain episodes. And precipitable water values, this is uh, an intermediate time at midnight uh, tonight, uh, uh, you know, heading into early Sunday morning, and you can see the precipitable water values getting up uh, close to two inches across uh, portions of the southeastern U.S. And by the time we get out to uh, midday on Sunday, we see that the precipitable water values are still up there, uh, even though they have come down a little bit as the system wrings some moisture out of the air. The trough moves by uh, as it as it weakens, and we maintain this uh, long wave trough position off to our west, and uh, so that should bring an end to the rain. But the good news here is you see the 540 thickness line, which is kind of a demarcation line separating the warmer air from the south of that and the war colder air to the north of that. You can see that that line doesn't get down uh, very close to Alabama. It gets down into the mid south area, in the vicinity of about uh, oh. Uh, 
uh, Dyersburg, not quite Jonesboro, Arkansas, you know, southeastern Missouri. We see that the flow goes almost zonal across the southeastern U.S., and that that is good for us because that keeps the cold air pretty much at bay. So we cool down, but we don't go extremely cold. We see that zonal flow pattern uh, with another closed low developing out over the southwestern United States on Wednesday. And Thursday, it begins to start its trek uh, eastward as it opens up and is moving out across the Four Corners area. And so uh, we'll probably be dry through Thursday, but uh, that brings another system, or that, that system moves towards the lower Mississippi River Valley on Friday. And so once again, that should turn our weather wet uh, with another fairly low latitude uh, storm system to deal with on the 2nd and into the morning hours or into the 3rd of January. And uh, so once again, it looks like uh, we start the weekend next, the first weekend of 2015 on a wet note with a good deal of uh, rain. Uh, so may start the 2015 with a bit of a surplus as we end the year on a slight deficit for 2014. Looking out into voodoo country, uh, the GFS is maintaining a bit of a trough over the eastern half of the country, but it's not terribly high amplitude trough. Therefore, you know, it will be cool, but not necessarily extremely cold. And by the time we get out to the end of the period, around the 11th of January, we see another short wave moving across the central Mississippi River Valley, uh, which would mean another possible wet system. Uh, but again, we don't see any extremes in terms of the cold. Well, that'll do it for the Weather Extreme video for this morning. I expect to have the next one posted first thing on Sunday morning. In the meantime, stay tuned to the blog for notes on the ever-changing weather across central Alabama. Have a good day and Godspeed.